So let's begin with combo, proportional, and random elements. So I'm just going to open up a clock here. Here's a quick little trick for you. When you create a new clock, it, a lot of stations have hundreds of clocks in them and don't know what clock ID is available to them. You can use a question mark as a wild card. So if you want it to start with A, you can type A question mark and hit enter, and it's going to pull up the first available A clock ID that's not in use. You can tell I don't have many clocks in here. I only have the one, so we're not really going to worry about that, but just a quick little tip for you. So here's our uh, demo clock for today. Now, in your clock, uh, the first element we're going to look at in the element type field here is combo. A combo lets you select multiple categories from which Music Master can choose. Sometimes these are referred to as fallback positions. So if we wanted to build a combo here of categories D, F, and G, we click OK. And that position is now built. Now, the order in which it's going to schedule from these categories is based on your scheduling properties, which is where you set up your pass order. You can get there a couple of different ways. The simplest is going to data set, schedule, and schedule properties. You can see here my categories are scheduling in alphabetical order, but if they weren't and we had category H scheduling before category D and G, it would start with the H category. And if it can't fill, I'm sorry. I'm using D, F, and G. So in this situation, it would try the D. If it can't do the D, it's going to drop to the G. If it can't do the G, then it would do the F. It's based on your schedule properties here. So a cool trick with these is that if you don't always want it to start with the D category, you want it to sometimes start with one of the other categories in the list, you can build multiple levels of scheduling properties using this little guy right there, show hide the level assignment grid. When you do this, you can say, you know, on Tuesdays, I want to use level two, for example. So when we go to level two, we've got a whole different pass order. So we could rearrange the categories into a different order here. And then when scheduling on Tuesdays, it would test those elements from your combo position in a different order. And you could do a third level for a different day. I've seen stations actually go one, two, three, one, two, three, et cetera, throughout the course of a day. And then the next day they alter it, two, three, one, two, three, one, and the next day, three, one, two, three, one, two, and schedule it out that way. That way, every hour, the pass order is just a little bit different to compensate for those combo elements. So I'm not going to save the changes there. But that's how a combo position works. Looks at the categories you've selected in the order in which those categories are being tested in your pass order, and that's how they work. And then if it doesn't work with the first one, it drops to the second. If it doesn't work there, it drops to the third before it will leave the position unscheduled. After combo, we've got a position called proportional. Now, proportional position is just that. It allows you to set up a ratio between categories. So using those same categories, if I did a one to one to one ratio, I would get a third of the time it would be a D, a third of the time an F, and a third of the time a G over the course of time for this position in this clock. If I had two of these positions in the clock, each one would be unique unto itself. So this one, you'd get a third of the time D, F, and G. This one, you get a third of the time D, F, and G. If I had a third one of these, it's not going to be a third of the time Ds for these, a third of the time Fs for these. So it's not going to be during the course of using this clock, you're going to get a third of them to be Ds, a third of them Fs, a third of them Gs. Over the course of time for the position, you'll get a third D, a third F, and a third G. And you can do these proportions however you wish. So if you want more Ds than Fs and Gs, you could do a three to two to one ratio, for example. I'm just going to delete those extra two. Now, sometimes people like to bounce back and forth. So that a position half the time will be a D, half the time an F, half the time a D, half the time an F, and so on and so forth. And there's a different way to do that so that you do get that definite back and forth. And I'll be showing you that in a few minutes when we talk about uh, another element type, which is called format lists. OK, so our next element that we're going to look at here is random. Random looks the same as these combos and proportionals, except here it's randomly picking one of these categories. So when Music Master starts the automatic scheduler process, 
it will go ahead and it will create the schedule and lay in all the positions based on your clocks for the day. It randomly is going to pick a D, F, or a G in this position. If that position that picked it, let's say it picks an F, and there isn't an F category song available to play at that point because all the songs in the F category and the available depth violate some rule, the position is now going to be left unscheduled. It doesn't fall back to a different category. It doesn't say, well, you know, let's try a different one. It's going to leave it unscheduled. Now, when you're editing the log, it'll let you look through all three of those categories, assuming you have three in the random position. So what's the difference between them? Combo's a fallback, where it looks at all three categories before it gives up. Proportional does that over the course of time, the ratio that you've established. In random, just randomly, like 52 card pickup, finds a song out of one of those categories to play. And if that selected category doesn't work, it leaves the position unscheduled. So there's our first three clock elements that we're going to talk about. With that, I'm going to take a quick swallow of water and move on to the next items. We're going to talk now about clock filters versus library query positions. So in any given clock, and you're likely accustomed to seeing your clocks look like this, we can go to a position, double click on it and go to the filters tab. And here we can filter based on pretty much any field in your library. So if we want to, we can say that this song that we're going to schedule here has to have a certain tempo or a certain genre or a certain uh, artist, that sort of thing. So if we did that on artist keywords, we could say contains the artist keyword of, let's say, Paul McCartney. And add that in. So now when we go to schedule this position, assuming we turn on the rule for clock filters, it will have to play a Paul McCartney song in this position of the clock. More commonly, what we'll see is things based on attributes. So we might say it has to have a specific gender on it. Gender contains any of male. We have to have a male position here. Or maybe we have to have a female position here. Or it might be something else. Let's see what other fields have we got in here. has to have a certain sound code. Sound contains any of, we want this to be a number one song. So now with both of these in place, it has to be, because we're saying match all, has to be a female song that's coded as having been a number one. Click OK on that. That will follow this filter so long as we go into our rule tree and we turn on the rule under format clock rules for format clock filter one. We would just drag that and drop that into our unbreakable folder. Now it will abide by that, assuming the category selected there follows the all category rules. We'll cover all the cool stuff in the rule tree at another point in another session down the road. But that's how you would work with a clock filter. Your second option, instead of using clock filtering, would be to use an entirely different element type called a library query. So our library query position lets you filter at the top of the screen here and lets you pick what categories you want it to dig through and the order you want them to dig in the lower portion. So let's do something very similar. We're going to go for sound code number one. Sound contains any of one, number one songs. And then we're going to select the categories that we want it to look through. Right now, it's going to try the D category first, then it will try the F category, then the G, then the H. If I wanted to try the G category first, I can drag that up. If I wanted to try the D category last, I can drag it down. So the first thing Music Master will do when scheduling this position is it's going to filter for songs that contain the sound code of one. Then it's going to try to find one in the G category. If it can't, then it'll try to find one that works in the F category, then the H, then the D. So library queries do not require a rule. It filters the library first, then looks through a series of those pre-selected categories for songs that meet that filter, finding the best one based on the order in which those categories are listed. The advantage of the library query is that failures don't count against the search depth, and you can set up a unique pass order 
just for this one position. So you could have multiple library query elements in your clock, and each one could have a different pass order. So you can essentially get a different feel for your library every time you go with this. The only catch with using library query elements is when you start the automatic scheduler, you have to make sure you check the box here in library query elements. Otherwise, it won't schedule them. Just like if you don't have a category checked, it won't schedule it. You have to tell it to schedule the library query elements. The other thing is in your pass order. Again, this is data set, schedule and schedule properties. We were here a few minutes ago. Library query has its own pass order. So if you want your library queries to schedule up here first, make sure you drag it to the top of the list and save those changes. So with it set that way, the first thing that's going to be scheduled with our schedule properties is our kickoff positions, because that's the kickoff category, though I have that one disabled, it won't actually schedule anything from it. Then it's gonna fill all the library query elements, then it's gonna start with my heavy currents, medium currents, et cetera, down the list. So we've looked at combos, proportionals, randoms, clock filters, library queries. Now we're gonna get into some really fun stuff. In the event you have a radio station and you want things to be spontaneous sounding, you don't want to follow the same pattern all the time. You don't want to have a different clock for every hour. You can do a couple of different things. The first one I'm going to show you is called a format list. To build a format list, you go to your clock icon, go to your format list tab, and you're going to create a brand new format list. And we're just going to call this uh, clock demo list. It looks like a regular old empty clock, but what you're building here is a pattern in which you want Music Master to follow what you're scheduling. And you've got different element types within here. So we can do fixed positions, we can throw combos in, we can throw proportionals in and randoms and so on. So for starters, I'm just going to say I want to start my, my format list with an A, then I want to go to a D, then I'm going to play a C, then a G, then I'm going to do an F. So I'm just building this kind of like I would be building a clock. So we've built this pattern, and you'll see that this first element has a blue square on position one. That's where our format list is going to start when we start using it in the clock. So we've saved this list, and now we build an empty clock. Our first element type, well, like in most radio stations, we're going to start with the top of our legal ID. And then our first music element is going to come from that saved list. I'm sorry, not saved list. It's going to come from the format list. And we can pick from the format lists here. The one we just built is called clock demo list. We're telling it to start with the next one in that list. And I want to schedule a whole pile of these for my whole hour. So I have 15 of those in the hour because we've got the first thing as a top of our ID. And now I can throw in all of my other stuff. So I can throw in my generic imaging every couple of songs. I can throw in my traffic merge position. I can make another traffic merge position down here. And then I can keep throwing in my other stuff. I can throw in more imaging if I wish. I can put in a whisper here and there type of thing. So you build your clock around it. 
So the way it's going to work is as Music Master is scheduling, it's going to go to the clock demo list and it's going to pick the first item from it. And then it's going to keep picking the next items. I have 15 items here. My format list itself is 10 items long. So it's going to schedule one through 10 and then one through five. That'll give us 15. So our next time we use this clock, it's going to start with position six. And we'll schedule 15 items. And the next time it'll start with position one again. So you want to make sure that your format list is a number of items in it so that you're not going to keep repeating the same thing over and over. I've seen format lists be three or four cat categories long. I've seen them be 40 and 50 items long. I have one customer that has a format list that they use for all of their music positions. And that format list is somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 elements long. They have every allowable category to category segue available. They make sure that they don't ever go from a heavy current to something super old. They make sure everything flows real nice in their list. They build one clock that they use for morning drive because it has a certain number of elements in it. They have another clock for middays because they have a few more elements scheduled there. They have another clock for PM drive and one for overnights. That's it. They only have four clocks and they let the format list do all of the rotating of the music for them. Hey, Paul. Hey, Joe. It's Joe Knapp. I have a pro tip for your audience. Looking at your format list, I don't know yes. if you know not, but as this repeats, you're going to get two A heavy currents back to back. It's a great point. I would probably add in another element here. Uh, let's go with another power recurrent, I think. So now we wouldn't get the heavy current back to back when it goes to repeat itself. And we're not always going to start off in position six or one because we're scheduling 15 items in the hour. So now it's going to leave off at position four, or rather position five. Then it's going to schedule 15, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Next time it's going to pick up on position eight and keep on going from there. So this number actually will work much better with my clock that's calling for 15 of these positions. So that's a good point, Joe. You can also have an entirely separate format list for your non-music stuff. So let's build that one. So here we're going to use generic imaging occasionally. We're going to throw in the imaging voice from time to time. Uh, we're going to throw in shouts, we're going to throw in whispers, occasionally a jingle, occasionally a liner. And now we can change up the order of these as we wish. So we can switch them up here and like so. So now if we want to, we can come into our format list, I'm sorry, the actual clock that we're looking at. And instead of scheduling a fixed position here, we can do another format list position. And we can use the clock demo non-music list. And we can do the same thing here. So now we don't even have to predict where our different non-music items are going to fall. It's going to be based on that format list. So it's a really cool way of doing different things. Earlier, I had mentioned proportional positions and that occasionally people want to go back and forth between two categories. You can do that with a format list. So if we come back over here to our format lists, I've pre-built one called AB. This one just goes back and forth between these two categories. So I could schedule it in such a fashion where I can pick that format list, AB, and if I put it in the clock a couple of times, every other time it's going to be an A. So here we're going to get an A, here we're going to get a B, here we're going to get the A. Let me move that down here a little bit. And then next clock, this one will start with a B, and then we'll get an A, and then we'll get a B, and then the next hour will be an A, and then a B, and then an A. Pretty cool way to get those different proportions built in there, uh, specifically using a format list. 
So you can have lots of unpredictability, yet the PD is going to know every transition works because he or she has built it to do those transitions exactly as they've set up. So we've already covered a whole lot of good material. So the next thing I want to look at here, and by the way, when you're done building clocks, make sure you save them. When you go to close an item, it will prompt you if you haven't saved it. We didn't save this list yet, so let's save that. Save this. And I'm going to close the rule tree here. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to close out of this demo clock. And I'm going to close this one without saving the changes. I'm going to go back to this A1 clock where we started. Music Master gives you the ability to migrate clock elements. What does that mean? Well, basically, you can tell Music Master to schedule any one of X number of categories in this position and then put in what we call flex rules to dictate which of those positions are going to be filled how. So for a simple example, I'm going to migrate my A's, B's, and C's, my heavy, medium, and light currents. So I'm going to change my medium current here to a migrating position. And it's going to be from A, B, and C. And you see we've got the flex rules just popped up at the bottom of our screen. So I'm going to do the same thing here with this light current. I'm going to copy this and drag it down here to replace this light current and delete it. I'm going to copy it again and get rid of this medium current. Oh, I deleted it instead. Whoops. And we've got a couple more of those here. I believe this is my last one of these. And real quick, we can click on the pie view icon here, and we can see how many times we're using the different categories. And we notice we still have a heavy current in here. There it is. So let's fix that one. All right, so we have no more fixed ABC positions. We have a total of, if we go to element usage, seven migrating positions. So now we're going to take a look at those flex rules. I've got those down here. So I have seven positions, each of which calls for an A, B, and C. And now I can give it some direction. I want at least two A's in the hour. I want at least two B's in the hour. And I want at least two C's in the hour. There are six of my elements. Let's make this one C in the hour. So now of those seven, we've already accounted for five. Now I'm going to tell Music Master that I can have three A's, three B's, and only one C. There's my setup. So I have to have those five, and here's the seven I have to have. I could also inc increase this to two, so now I've got flexibility. I could get three A's. I could get three Bs, I could get two Cs, but one of them is going to be one less. That still meet the minimum because I have seven positions and I'm calling for eight maximum in the hour. Furthermore, we can indicate some separation. So when I play an A, I need at least four positions to go by before I play another A. When I play a B, I need at least three positions to go by before I play another one. And with my Cs, because I really only need one an hour, I'm going to say six positions in between. So now we've got our clock all built. We're telling Music Master what we need in between plays of these. We could even break it up into sweeps. Sweeps are indicated here by the little sweep marker stop sign. So if we were using sweep indicators, we've got four of these positions before this first sweep marker. So I could say maximum for sweep of two of those and one of those and one of those. I would never get a weird rotation within that group. And then between the next two sweep markers, Size that down a little bit. I've got one, two, three positions. 
So that actually wouldn't work. I have to drop this down to one. Oh, I can leave it at two. We can say two per hour, two max per sweep. We can say two max per sweep of this and one of that. So long as we're not over restricting things. If we say we have to have no more than one per sweep of each of these, and we've got four positions, one of them would be left unscheduled. So you just got to pay attention to the math. You can even set up no segues so that your A's don't segue into a B or into a C. So we could do something here where the A's don't play next to each other, which we're already saying they have to stay four positions apart. We can say an A and a B can't play next to each other. So we could set that up so that A's don't segue into B's. Just note that the more stuff you set up in here, the more difficult it's going to be for Music Master to actually build this clock as it's doing things. Because now you got to make sure the math's going to work. So we go up here and we start with this first position. Looking for an A, B, or a C. All right, we're going to say there's an A. The next position, we can't segue into a B, so this one can't be a B, but it could be a C. Oh, and by the way, you can ignore the non-music stuff if you go into Tools and Options. Go to additional properties and come down here and to schedule. Uh, no, it's not in schedule. Son of a gun, I just forgot where I was going for this. Here it is under clocks. Uh, flex rules skip non music categories. We're going to say yes. So it's set to a one. Again, that's tools and options and then additional properties. And then under the clocks heading, flex skip non-music set to one. So we're not going to count this non-music category position in between. So between here and here, we if this is an A, this one can't be an A or a B. So this one has to be a C. So we've got one A and one C done. So we've already met our minimums for C's in this hour. Now we go to this next position. Could this one be an A? Well, it's got to be four positions away, and it's not. It's only two positions away. So that one can't be an A. Could it be a B? We say we have to have at least three in between Bs. We haven't scheduled a B yet, so this is going to become a B position here in, in line eight. Line nine, we can't have a, an A or a B next to an A or a B, so this one's also going to have to be a C. So now we've filled our max for Cs. We keep coming down here. We're more than four positions away, so this one could be an A. So now we've got two A's in the hour. This one can't be a B because we don't let B's and A's segue next to each other. We've already used up all of our C's. So this position is going to be left unscheduled because our flex rules don't work. And that's the point of this, of this uh, exercise is to say, if your flex rules are too restrictive, you're going to run into problems with your clocks. We run into this when we're doing tech support for our customers. They tell us, oh, we're using migrating positions. And the format, the automatic scheduler is just running and running and running, and it's not actually producing a log. So we'll ask the user to stop the automatic scheduler, and then we're going to go look at the thinking file. And you can get that under data set, schedule, and recap report. And here you go to the thinking file, and this is going to be a breakout of everything that happened decision-wise during your last automatic schedule session. I haven't actually scheduled with a migrating clock at this point. So, but what you would see is something along the lines of a line here that says, you know, midnight hour, testing migrating positions. We've tested 837,000 possible combinations and have not found one that works. And then it moves on to the next hour. And it says, okay, we're doing migrating in this hour. We've tested 56,214. No, uh, no usable pattern has been found. And it's because the flex rules are too restrictive. So you want to make sure that that's not going to happen to you. Again, you can get to your recap report, data set, schedule, and recap. And then, like I said, you can go to the thinking file. Generally speaking, if you're an insomniac, this is a great way to help you fall asleep by reading this thing. Uh, for Music Master Tech Support, it comes in really handy because we can help you figure out why things happened or didn't happen during your last automatic schedule session using it. So that's how we would do a migrating clock just on our currents. And like we've already established, we have to relax some of these things. So we could get rid of our max per sweep. We get rid of our minimum separations. We could just say we don't want them back to back with themselves. 
and we could potentially get rid of these as well. So now things would be much easier and we can go back in here and we can say, okay, here's an A, here's a B, here could be another A, this could be a C, here's another A, that's three of them, this is another B, and this could be a B. We have no problems because we haven't violated our flex rules. This clock will now schedule just fine. And we'll get some variation too. So if it happens to start over here and starts with this position, say, okay, here's gonna be an A. Now we're gonna try this position, that one could be a B. Now we're gonna do this position, that one could be another A. This one could be a C, this one could be a B. And then we go back up here and we do these other two and we still have positions to work. So the way migrating clocks work is they allow things to move around within those positions. And it'll even think for you. So if you have an issue where, oh, we can't quite do it because we've moved something, they could move some of those positions and make things work out better for you. So that's how migrating positions work. We've only migrated the currents in this example. And I'm gonna save this as a new clock. And that's a new feature in version seven that you have the save as feature here. So I'm gonna give this, uh, let's see here. AC, and we're going to call this Currents Migrating. Just a reminder, if you have any questions, you can pop them in the Q&A portion of the, uh, of the webinar screen, and we'll take a look at those and answer those accordingly. So we have saved that clock. Now let's build a whole brand new clock from scratch. In this clock, we're gonna build all migrating elements. And I'm gonna let it migrate amongst all of my active music categories. And just to make this quick, we're gonna have 15 in the hour. And now we're gonna build our flex rules. So this is where these different segue items are gonna come in really handy because we're gonna tell it we don't wanna segue recurrence back to back with each other. So we can't segue a D with an F, we can't segue an F with a D. We're not gonna let it segue golds with each other. So we're not gonna let G segue into H's or H's into G's. Furthermore, we're going to tell currents that they can't segue into one another. So with those simple parameters, we now know that our clock is not going to have any segues we don't want between an A and a B or a B and a C. We can also set up some minimum separations. We want to make sure that we don't play the same category back to back. So we can just tell it separate by one. Now we can build up our minimums and maximums per hour. We can tell Music Master we want at least two A's, but no more than three. We want one, but no more than two light currents. We'll go with two and three for the medium currents as well. And we scroll down to the bottom. We've got 15 elements. We've accounted for five to eight of them. So now we can say we want at least two power recurrents and two primary golds, one secondary and one secondary. So now we've got 11 of them. You can see four of those, four of those, two here and two here. Got a lot of leeway here. We have 15 positions. We're forcing 11 of them to happen. And then we still have another five positions to go of leeway. So again, we can look at this clock and figure out what our math is going to be here. So again, you just go into a random position in the clock and start figuring it out. So if we start here in position four, we could say this is gonna be an A. And the next one can't be a B or a C, but it could be a D. So here's an A and then a D. And then we're gonna to go to the next position. And of course, it's going to work through the pass order as well. So we've got a question here from Todd. Todd's asking if you can do a combo fallback, including a special set. Stinking for artist linked imaging, having a fallback category if there is no match. 
So that's a great question, Todd. And I know it's something Jesus is going to address when he does his session on special sets in two weeks. Uh, the way that works is using a special set. So I'm just going to jump down here and we're going to create a special set position. I'm not going to go too in depth on these because I'm not planning on covering special sets in my session today because Jesus will be doing so much. But when you do this, you tell it to look at the previous music item and look at a specific field. So intro ID keyword, for example. And here you can list the categories you want it to dig through. So we can pick multiples of these and then order them the way you want them to go. So we can tell it to start with a custom one. And if it can't find a custom one that matches, it can go to the generic imaging. So that's how that would be covered uh, in that situation. Starting in 7.0.9, we've made an enhancement to Music Master under Tools and Options and Additional Properties. And again, I wasn't prepped for this today, so you're going to have to forgive me as I hunt for this for a moment. Uh, there is an option here for special set blanks. You can set it to one. And what this will do now, and this starts in 709, it's not available in any earlier version, but it is in 709 and going forward. It will match a blank keyword field to a blank keyword field in special sets. Prior to 709, you had to have a generic keyword, which typically was the word generic. And then it would have to match generic to generic. You don't have to do that anymore starting in 709. You can just have blank match to blank. So that's how that would work going forward. And that's how your special set would do that with a fallback. So back to migrating positions. Uh, we've got all of our separation set up in here. And like I said, you just have to mathematically go through it. Giving it a lot of flexibility is great because then Music Master can find different patterns to work through and can come up with different ways of getting what you're requesting. So you might have an hour that has two A's and has three B's, and you might have an hour that has three A's and two B's. You might have an hour that has one, and sometimes you'll have an hour that has two light currents. And you'll never get more than four power recurrents or four primary golds in this situation, no more than two secondaries. But where they fall on the clock, ultimately, is up in the air. You can go a step further, and you can migrate certain categories with certain categories. So we could change this position and say that this one, we only want to migrate our recurrents and golds. And in this position, we only want to migrate our currents. And you can have certain positions for each of those. And you can have combinations thereof. There's just there's many different ways you can set this up. And whatever works best for you is the way we would encourage you to go with this. So that's migrating positions. Well, that covers all the topics I intended to go through today. Uh, I'm going to stick around and answer any Q&A that happens to pop up. So if you've got questions, please pop those into the uh, list there, and I'll be happy to answer your questions for you. If you're using the migrating positions uh, and you have several clocks, the same clock several times in a row, uh, it's going to, you're probably going to get a different clock every time because the migrating is going to move things around. Can you mix and match different migrating position clocks with different flex rules so that you get, like maybe have night clocks that are migrating that are totally different from the afternoon clocks? Sure can. Each clock is unique unto itself. So if you have daytime clocks that are going to have a few fewer positions in them, you don't have to, you won't have as many migrating. You can have nighttime clocks that might have more positions and your flex rules are unique to that clock. So if you use in this case, clock M1 all day, these are your flex rules all day. But if you make a copy of M1 and have M2 as secondary all migrating, you could have all different flex rules in that clock so that you get a completely different feel in a different hour. And of course, you can use these clocks wherever you want. You can use the same clock 24-7, or you can have 168 clocks, one for every hour. It's entirely up to you. So we've got a question for Marianne. Do flex rules carry over when you export and import clocks? Uh, no, I don't know if the flex rules carry over when you export and import clocks. That's a great question. Let's try one. So we're going to save this clock. And Joe's not in the same room. But no, talking. Joe's in a separate, separate state even. I'm in the same state, but I'm just probably not talking loud enough. <laughs> so let's go to the all migrating. Let's export this clock. Save that. Yes. OK. 
Okay, and now I'm going to import that clock. And I want to assign a new unused clock code, so I'm going to hit OK. All right. So imported as AD. So no, the flex rules do not come in when exporting and importing clocks. That's a super great question. I'm glad you asked it. No, the flex rules don't come in. One thing to point out too, when you export and import clocks, when you're importing a clock, if you don't have that category that's in that clock, it will create that as an empty category in your station, in your database. Um, and you'll just have a position and they're calling for a fixed category X, even though it has nothing in it. And you'll see all of those extra categories added at the bottom of the list of categories in your info bar. Um, so, you know, you can certainly export and import clocks all you want, but certain things don't come through like flex rules as we see. Forced items don't come through exactly either because the force is based on the Music Master song ID, which is a unique internal number in your database. So your song ID number one is not going to be anybody else's song ID number one. So you'll get instead of the forced position, you'll get a log note that says this is what had been forced in the original data. What do you want to force here? And then you can go in and mass change those. Well, it looks like that wraps up our session for today. I'll hang around for a little bit longer to answer any further questions, but I do appreciate everybody joining us today and we'll see you two weeks.